Today I'm going to talk about the most common mistakes that Freestyle Libre users make. If you avoid these mistakes, you will save money, time and energy. So if you want to get more out of your Libre sensor, keep watching. Let's go! Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Tom and I've been type 1 diabetic for over 30 years. On this channel, I help you on your diabetes journey. We talk a lot about Freestyle Libre and other diabetes tips and tricks. Freestyle Libre is a great tool for diabetes management when used sensibly. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't fully understand how the system is meant to work and complain about the number of things. The sensor doesn't give me accurate readings because my Libre says 8 and my glucometer says 11. Or the sensor doesn't last 14 days and it falls off way too early. Or the sensor causes pain, bleedings and irritates my skin. And hey, if you're complaining as well, I fully understand your frustration. But I want to challenge you. Ask yourself, do I really understand how the system is meant to work? Am I doing everything the right way? Am I not making a mistake somewhere? Or is there something I can do differently? Today I'm gonna talk about four most common mistakes that users make and I encourage you to focus on them and eliminate these four things. Please make sure you watch all the way to the end because only if you eliminate all four of these mistakes you will get the most of your Freestyle Libre. Mistake number one. You expect every Libre reading to be exactly the same as a glucometer reading and every time you scan with Libre, you try to verify the number of your, on your glucometer. That is not reasonable because even two glucometers usually give you slightly different results. And the rule of thumb is that you can expect your reading to be plus minus 15% off from the actual glucose. So if you check your blood sugar and your glucometer reads 6 millimol, it means that your actual glucose is somewhere between 5.1 and 6.9. So if your actual blood sugar is 6 millimol, your sensor shows 5.1 and your glucometer shows 6.9, both of these values are within the 5% rule of thumb tolerance. If your actual blood glucose is 20, the sensor shows 17 and glucometer shows 23, it's within the 15% tolerance again. These situations are perfectly normal and they don't mean that your sensor is faulty. Now, to make it even more complicated, the Libre readings are taken from the interstitial fluid and not from blood. The interstitial fluid readings are always approximately 10 minutes delayed when compared to readings from blood. So during times when your blood glucose is rising or falling fast, you should expect the difference even more than plus minus 15% because of the time lag between blood glucose and sensor glucose. If your head is spinning from all the numbers and percentages right now, let me turn this theory into a few easy to understand tips. Tip number one, don't expect your Libre reading to be exactly the same as your glucometer reading and do not compare every single reading to the glucometer. They are both slightly off anyway. It makes sense to verify the sensor reading in situations where it shows very high glucose or a hypo just to make sure you make the right treatment decision but please don't check the sensor reading every time. And tip number two, focus on reviewing dairy patterns and trends rather than focusing too much on the absolute numbers. You want to maximize your time in range and avoid any huge spikes or drops in your blood sugar. The time in range is really the most important measure here. Before we move to the next mistake, let me know in the comments, do you still use glucometer to verify Libre accuracy? Mistake number two, you apply your Libre in a wrong spot and your sensor gets ripped out. This is a classic. A lot of users place their sensor repeatedly on the outer side of their arm and later on they are very surprised that the sensor gets knocked off by a door frame, seat belt, backpack or something else. Come on, this is common sense, the outer side of the arm is more exposed what did you expect? I actually stopped using the outer side exactly for that reason lately. I find the back side slightly towards inner side of the arm much safer. And I also started experimenting with alternative sides for sensor placement. 
I tried thigh and chest. They are so much less exposed than the arm. And I made a video about each of these alternative sides. I will link them here in case you want to check them out. Speaking of the right spot for the sensor, please make sure you rotate the spots frequently. Your skin needs time to recover and if your skin is damaged and you place the sensor adhesive on a damaged or dry skin, the sensor adhesive is more likely to come off and you lose your sensor. So rotate the spots frequently. Mistake number three is insufficient skin preparation before the sensor application. So guys, if your sensor comes off frequently, pay extra attention when preparing the skin before the application. I find the advice of the Freestyle Libre educators on this topic very good. The Freestyle Libre educators recommend washing the skin with soap and water and you don't want to use soap which smells really nice or has any added coloring or hydrating components because all these can make the skin oily and the sensor adhesive less effective. Use the most basic, non-colored and non-perfumed soap there is. If your skin is hairy, consider shaving it because the hairs make the adhesive less effective as well. Use the alcohol swab that is in the package and let your skin dry off properly after using it before you apply the sensor. You can use an extra layer of extra adhesive like skin tag on your skin just like Michelle is showing in her video here to make the sensor adhesive stick better. After the application you can use an extra over patch like sim patch but if you do so make sure you don't cover this little spot in the middle of the sensor. This one should not be covered and the manufacturer says that this little spot here is used to balance the humidity and the temperature around the sensor. So it's very important to keep this middle spot in the middle of the sensor not covered. Mistake number four is scanning too much or not scanning enough. But how many times a day should you scan? The Freestyle Libre educators usually recommend around 10 times a day as a minimum. I think that balance is important when it comes to everything. So try to scan enough but not too much. Scanning three times a day, hmm, you're probably not taking a full advantage of the sensor. Scanning hundreds times a day, hey, you might be putting yourself under a lot of pressure and just doing it too much which leads to stress and then uh, higher blood sugar just as a consequence of the stress. So try to find the balance that works best for you uh, and try to stay within the 10 times a day ballpark recommended by the Freestyle Libre educators. I have to admit that personally I probably scan less than 10 times a day on average. I would say it's more around 6 to 8 times usually before meal or after meal and before or after physical activity. But I'm curious how many times a day do you scan? Let me know in the comment below. You might already know that another great way how to get more out of your Libre sensor is subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell so you don't miss any future videos. You can learn more Libre tips and hacks by clicking on the playlist on the screen right now. I will see you in the next Type 1 Talks video. Ciao!